Good day, everyone. Today we are talking about section 9.3, which is on stem and leaf plots. Our learning targets for today, I can create a stem and leaf plot. I can draw conclusions from a stem and leaf plot. So first we talk about what is a stem and leaf plot. And we have an example over here. And you will see that we have what's called a stem organized on the left side and then leaves on the right. If you have one, you typically go to the right. Now you'll notice it's very organized. As we can see, the numbers are increasing as you go away from the stem. So that's kind of a, a thing. And most of the time you'll see them that they don't have commas. You just have a space between values. And so we, we're going to say a stem and leaf plot is an organized data display. that uses a single digit to represent a data point. A key, I'm gonna start this because this is a big thing. You must have a key. It's an absolute must. So the first thing is your key has units. So when I'm looking at this, your key tells you what do these numbers represent. In this case, we're talking about home runs. And it also helps to decipher the data points. Because we only use a single digit, the key tells us, are we dealing with 0.3 or 3 when we look at this? Or like, so here our key says 1 bar 4 represents 14 home runs. We could also be talking like miles, and it could be 1.4 miles. The only way you know the difference is because of the key. So the two parts, the stem is like the groups, if you will. So if you think back to when you were in elementary school, you had those like little blue plastic blocks where you had this really little cube was one, and then you had 10 of those together and like a little rod was a group of 10, and then 10 of those rods made like a flat square, and then 10 of those flat squares made a huge, uh, large cube. Well, groups, like when we made those rods, it was a group of 10. That's the idea behind the stem. The smallest stem is on top. Leaves are like the units. So they are listed in order. From smallest to largest with the smallest closest to the stem. So as you can see here, we got 41, and then it goes 42, that kind of thing, and it keeps going out. Later on, we'll talk about a double or a back-to-back -back stem and leaf plot, and so on the left side, things look a little weird. but. We're not there yet. All right. A survey asked people how many miles they commute to work. The results are listed below. Make a stem and leaf plot of the data. So the first thing you need to do is you need to find your smallest data point. And you need to find your largest data point. The reason you need to do this is because it helps you determine your stems. So how, how many groups are there for the number two? Well, there aren't any. And so once you determine what your smallest stem is, you are then going to use that to, or you're going to start there and you're going to go all through all of the stems. We don't skip. So I have zero, one, two, three. And so three would be my largest stem. I don't need to go beyond that. 
And so when we're doing this, and what some people will do is put this, put all of these data points into your calculator, so they count them up and they're 17, and they will use the list feature to sort these, so they get them all, because again, they are going to be in order from smallest to largest. We know 2 is our smallest one. We're going to, and again, some people will cross them off when they're done. Our next smallest is 4. Again, leaving a space, no commas, and then I have two fives on here. And so some people will cross them off. Some people will use their calculator, so they just need to follow along on their calculator. Again, I try to keep the space uniform. I know not everyone's going to be perfect at it. Mine aren't quite completely uniform. But then you're going to do the same thing with the ones. All the numbers that start with one are all going to go on this stem. And then I'm going to do all the numbers starting with 2, and then all the numbers starting with 3. And then, before I do anything else, I'm going to count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, to make sure I have all of my data points. So I count at the beginning, how many data points do I have? Once I have my stem and leaf plot, I count, do I have all 17 leaves on there? Again, the key is the important part. When you pick the key, or when you make the key, pick any data point. I just tend to pick whatever, like here, there's 3 bar 5. So 3 bar 5 represents 35. And then what was our units? You go back to the problem. It says how many miles they commute to work. So 3 bar 5 represents 35 miles. That is creating a stem and leaf plot. Use stem and leaf plot to find the range. Well, we know the range is the max minus the rin. So range will be 35 minus 2 is 33. Again, using those units. The median. Now, this is where I talked about the counting method is useful versus trying to do the 1, because if you're doing 1, you got to go 35, 2, then you got to go 7. So you got to go right to left when you're going down, but left to right when you're going up. Again, what I do, and I recommend, 17 divided by 2 is 8.5. Since it's an odd data set, we know it's going to be one of the terms. It's going to be the ninth term. So we're going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And again, I could count from the top going down. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Either way, I get 12. Miles. All right. I would like you to pause the video and try making your own stem and leaf plot as well as finding the range and the median. Again, when I was doing this, I found my smallest term was 16. So I only had to start at 1. I didn't have to put a 0 stem because there was no 0 values. Again, I start with what is my smallest stem. And then my largest term was 51. So I needed all the stems from 1 through 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Again, I personally use my calculator to sort them. So they're from smallest to largest. So I can just go, oh, here are my numbers, 16, 18, and then 21, 22, 22, 25. Um, but it's your personal choice. If you don't feel comfortable using the calculator, again, you can do the cross-out method that way. Just make sure you count that you have the same number of data points in, in the given data set as you do leaves on your stem and leaf plot. And I cannot emphasize enough, do not forget your key, 51 minutes. Again, range, 35 minutes. Median, 13 divided by 2 is 6.5, so it's the seventh data point. So I count 6, circle the seventh data point on that. All right, so that was making a stem and leaf plot. Now we're going to talk about what are called back-to-back, -back, or some call them double stem and leaf plots.
Um, but basically what happens is we are com using these to compare two things. So in this case, we're comparing phone batteries. And when we're doing this, we share the stems. And you'll notice here brand A, the smallest one is on the right. And as we go out, the numbers are getting bigger. That's how this works. If there's no numbers here, like for the leaves, four, there's nothing. That means there are nothing in the 40s on either side, actually. Um, and so it says calculate the min, the max, the range, and the median for both brands. So we're going to do a little chart here. We're going to do there's A, there's B. I'm going to switch colors for that. And then we're going to calculate each of these things. So the min the max, the range, and the median. So go ahead, pause the video, and calculate each, the min, the max, the range, the median for both A and for B. All right, so for A, you should have found the minimum was five hours, the max was 61 hours. Uh, the range then subtract the two and you get 56 hours. The median, again, there's 19 terms divided by two is 9.5. So you calculate the 10th term. Now, again, when I'm doing brand A, I'm counting right to left. So I'm going one, two, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So again, the left side is kind of backwards. We're going to the left instead of going to the right like we're used to. So brand B, 7, 75, 68, 22, again, counting the 10th terms, you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Because it's 9.5, so 9 terms on each side, 0.5 means it's actually going to be a data point. Now, the question is, which brand is better? So we've got all these numbers, and we go, well, which one's better? And I would say, looking at it, brand B is better, the min is better, the max is better, and the median is better. So we're going to say brand B. And then if it asks you why, even though it doesn't, we're going to say brand B has a higher... Min, max, and median. So if you're asked to explain or to justify, that's what we're talking about. Why do you say brand B is better? All right. Our last example here, another back-to-back -back stem and leaf plot, or some will call it a double stem and leaf plot. Either way, same difference. Um, talks about fundraiser sales in thousands of dollars of the homerooms of two different grades. So our key, it's a little confusing here, so it should be that we have bars here. So 7 bar 0 represents 7.0, 7 bar 3, so this would be for ninth grade here, and then this would be for 10th grade, what the key is going to be. So I'm going to erase that and draw the bars back. So what I would like you to do, find the range, the median. And remember, when you're doing the mean, like this number here for 9th grade, this is 5.5 and 6.5 and 6.7. Remember, these are decimals. All right, so we are going to do, again, we're going to do a comparison. So you're going to do ninth grade, and then we'll do 10th grade. And we're going to do, let's see here, we need to calculate the range, the median, and the mean. So the range and the median, we've done, they're pretty easy. The mean, you did it in section one, add up all the terms, divide by the number there are. So I'd like you to pause the video and try each of these on your own. All right, so you did the calculations for ninth grade. 
to get 3.1 for the range, 7.7 .7 for the median. Again, there's 11 terms. You add them all up, you should get 82.9. You divide it by 11, you're going to get 7.54. Again, we're going to round to the nearest hundredth. Tenth. When you do 10th grade, you should get 1.7 for the range, 7.35 for the median, and the mean is 7.34. Compare the results. Well, what do we notice? Ninth grade has a larger range. So they have a larger range. Uh, let's see. They also have a higher median and a higher Uh, higher median and higher mean, as well as a higher median and mean. All right, so again, writing that statement, what do we notice from the data? We are going to do some more examples like this in class, but if you have any questions, come to class ready to ask. Otherwise, have a great day, everyone. everyone.